The 2009 Scottish Mortgage Investment Trust Book of the Year Awards takes place in just a short while in a marquee behind me. The Borders Book Festival then, once again the venue for such an award. Last year Edwin Morgan collected the first prize for his book, A Book of Lives. £30,000 is up for grabs for the winner. All four nominees will leave with £5,000 for getting this far. The four nominees then. Tom Pow for Poetry, Dear Alice. James Kelman for Fiction, Kieran Smith's Boy. Janice Galloway for Non-Fiction, This Is Not About Me. And Andrea McNichol for her first book, Moonshine in the Morning. The four authors at this stage will be pretty nervous on tender hooks, I would imagine. £30,000, a huge cash sum, will make quite a difference to their lives. A large crowd is expected. Rory Bremner is preparing the presentation. And the event begins at half past five in a very scenic setting here in the gardens of Harmony House. Thank you, Jim. Well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for this evening. Um, I'd just like to thank you all for coming along. Um, no, we have got to clear out, because I know the tent has been booked for a wedding um, this evening, so uh, if we've probably got about half an hour to get through it all. Um, it's lovely to be back here um, again for another year. This is, Melrose has become like a second home. In fact, if I was an MP, I'd probably claim for it on... <laughs> No, uh, Gordon Brown, so he's not here tonight, uh, he's actually down in London preparing for his retirement dinner. Um, it, it's a surprise dinner. Um, well, a surprise for him anyway. Uh, sorry. Uh, I do feel sometimes a bit sorry for Gordon Brown, because you think about it, you know, he's only got one eye, he hasn't slept for ten years, uh, English is his second language. Um, not only going to run the country, he's going to run the banks as well, so Cameron asks him a question, he says, cashier number four, please. <laughs> So I, I, I'm not here in, in person tonight, although you, you can find out my, my response uh, on this, as on every other issue, uh, by, by going on to YouTube. Uh, or, or indeed, if you go on to the, to the number 10 website, where, where you'll find Margaret Beckett uh, sitting on my Facebook. Um, <laughs> or you can follow the developments in, in, in quantitative easing on, 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 on Twitter, where I'll be, I'll be tracking all my supporters. <laughs> With, with regular regular tweets. Um, the only reason I'm here is to give a bouquet of flowers to James Kelman. Are you watching? James some flowers. I think what is so beautiful and admirable about Kieran Smith Boy is I think as one of the one of the judges said at, at one of the meetings, it's as if this was the book that James was waiting to write, or had been in him to write all these years, which was which is almost like is the basis of how you come to be articulate as a Scottish, as a West of Scotland Central Belt male. Now I've heard more than one person say that this essentially was the book that you've been waiting to write. Do you understand what they mean by that? No, I don't really. It sounds like nonsense to me, you know, having been writing for 35, 40 years, you know, and this is my 7th or 8th novel. No, I, I, I don't. It's, I think sometimes uh, people say things and they mean well, but really uh, what they, they mean is not to do with that the writer uh, should have been reading, uh, writing this, it's that uh, perhaps for the first time they've uh, uh, understood what the writer's doing, maybe that's what it means. But the, the prize itself, I mean, as you were saying, it, it, it has been difficult for you, it's difficult for everyone in, in Scotland, all writers, essentially, to make a living. It, it's going to make a, a difference to you. Well, you see, uh, ultimately, it's a great prize, you know, uh, 30,000 quid is a great prize. It's, uh, you know, it's about the equivalent of what uh, my daughters earn uh, in a year. So for me, it, it's almost like the idea that when a writer gets that, it allows them maybe to to continue and develop projects and work for a year without having to sweat, uh, to think, well, what, how the hell will I get by uh, next year? But, you know, you're always, uh, like uh, artists are self-employed, and you're always kind of ploughing all your your hopes and your efforts into a work that isn't necessarily going to sell anywhere. You know, that's part of the problem. We are not on a salary like you guys, you know. We don't have that kind of thing, so we're always ducking and diving, and that's how awards are. We do a bit of teaching. We get an award, we get a grant, we make occasional money from doing a reading and all, all of these things and, and that's how we get by. And it's good that 
uh, uh, people in our culture appreciate that that's what happens. It's not like we're in the pools or something. Now, is part of the problem as well the fact that contemporary writers don't necessarily get the, the recognition and the exposure that they should do? I know perhaps one or two yeah. perhaps do, but people like yourselves are perhaps always battling, you know, rowing against the waves, if you like, to try and, you know, get your name out yeah. there and, and get your work, you know, exposed and you know, make people aware of essentially what, what, what you're doing. Yeah, but you know, the, 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 again, the, the problem is that you, you, you can't really do that, you know, you, all you can do is, is do the actual work itself and you hope that, that people will advocate, in a sense, on your behalf, now, now whether that's uh, your publisher or, you know, if you're a musician, whether that's uh, the uh, A&R people or, you know, and if you're a, a painter, whether it's a gallery owner, you're hoping people will try and do that because it, it's, it's difficult in that sense uh, if you're trying to earn your living as an artist like what the hell you do uh, once you've produced the work you know you've then got to go and try and be a salesman or something it, it's, that is kind of difficult to do I actually uh, believe that our culture maybe our own culture and that I would say the media uh, all different areas of the media should should be aware and should value Scottish culture I don't actually believe that the Scottish media I mean, when did you last see a proper writer on television? I haven't seen I, I, don't, I don't know. Because they don't value it properly. But then most people involved in the media don't value Scottish culture. They only value if it comes through England. I don't know about you guys, but that's the way it's, it's here. You know, so the Scottish writers tend to be treated as second rate by the media in Scotland. Yeah, when you Unless they've earned maybe a million quid if they write detective stories. But, when but you if they are uh, working on proper work, then they aren't acknowledged. That I would argue. But when you say a Scottish writer on television, do you mean a, a writer effectively writing a drama, or someone? No, I just mean a, you could a, say a, that too. In a high-profile program. No, you could say that too. But I mean, when, when did you ever see Alistair Gray uh, recently been interviewed or been asked to uh, speak uh, in a serious manner about Scottish culture? When did you hear Tom Leonard been on speaking uh, about the political situation in Palestine? In other countries of the world, writers are kind of uh, regarded as people who have something to contribute to society. In Scotland, no, you have maybe football players or something. And I would regard the media as, uh, in Scotland has been so kind of Anglo-centred, especially in relation to art. I mean, I'm sure that includes you too, you know. But people that you don't, it's very difficult for you to see beyond what's been kind of praised in London. So once a Scottish writer is maybe praised in London, then they would maybe regard them as being worthy of being a... Uh, <laughs> a program done on television or something like that. So I don't really. That's probably how I really feel about the situation. Has the problem got worse then? Because I mean, you've been around the, the scene for a long time. You've been yeah. a writer for a long time. Would you say that your experiences over the last look back to say 25 years ago, and would you say that there was a greater chance of exposure then than there is now? Uh, within the media, no, I don't think so. Really, uh, if things go through. There are periods when it. Uh, kind of improves and then it, and it, you feel as though things are improving but it, it, it lapses into a sort of trough again or, uh, and the, it, it doesn't happen again. In the, the kind of mid to, I would say the mid 80s, there were a couple of good arts programmes on television where you, uh, around in Scotland, you know, which basically through Channel 4. So you had uh, maybe writers being interviewed or maybe a, a, a 14 minute feature or something, you know, but these days have gone now unless maybe the writer is writing children's stories about magicians, you know. But if it's anything that takes any kind of serious issue in politics or in Scottish culture, you, you don't have any. Uh, I mean, you, you're never on television, you know. You're not, you're not really involved in serious media, so it's hard, uh, you know. It's not so much hard, it's just, uh, well, I don't know what it says about Scottish culture. I don't have that much... Uh, faith and, and what uh, people who could do more for Scottish culture do. Uh, Scottish artists are, are carrying such a, a weight and f a, a, on behalf of the culture, but they aren't really supported that much. There are, I mean, areas like Scottish Arts Council are, do their best to support, you know, but it's, it's very it's difficult for them.